Okay, we're on. Um, hi guys, this is D here. Um, we got another uh, another video. Um, yeah, and this one I'm making uh, some tiles. Um, there's not going to be anything on them. Basically, you lay them down and um, just put your scatter sump terrain or your wall or whatever ridiculousness you want. Um, the idea was partially uh, re uh, reinvigorated to me from many years ago and partially stolen from Magrathia, Builder of Worlds. I wanted to give him credit because, um, yeah, if I hadn't watched his videos where he was making the sump, I would have come never remembered how to do this. I did this in a long time ago. Um, so thanks, Tim. Um, if you're watching this, uh, hey man, leave a message. Uh, I'd like to get together and do something. It'd be awesome. Um, so anyways, uh, back to what I was saying here. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah. Um, these tiles are for my friend, Mike. Um, he's uh, a major part of our Necromunda group. Um, he is into 3D printing like I am into all of this. Um, yeah, he prints an awful lot. MDF and resin and all that stuff. He prints figures for me and terrain and little props and all that other stuff. But anyways, um, he was, uh, keeps talking about doing a Sampragada, um, event at one of our, our, uh, group's, uh, big games. Um, and, uh, so he needs a sump and Hey, I needed to bust into a new project here. So, you know, we're going to have this one, uh, and I'm going to do an opening, which is, you know, I haven't done that in a while. Um, hopefully this one's a little better than the other one was. <laughs> um, yeah, it's different with cameras and microphones and stuff. Um, but anyways, um, you know, I'm excited. We're going to do, uh, you know, four by six sump board. Um, so enjoy. Uh, okay. So, um, we have plexiglass tiles here. Um, really nice. You can get them from the, you know, most of your home stores or, uh, you know, I have a hardware store, so I sell it. Um, when you're using this, of course, uh, to get the glue to stick a little better with this little project, uh, you want to sand first. Um, then all you're going to do is use uh, white glue. And if you take a look real close in there, that's a really cheap bottle of white glue I have there. It says white glue. Um, add a little water and you're going to mix it down to um, ah, milkshake consistency is a little thick, um, or a little thin, sorry. Um, yeah, um, you kind of see how I'm spreading it out. It's it's thinner than regular glue, but a little thicker than a milkshake. Um, you can try different things. I mean, you can put it on straight if you want to as well. That's a little bit more of a mess. Um, the, uh, the other thing is if you do it straight, it doesn't really soak into this paper. As you see, I'm, it's, uh, it's just, uh, wrapping paper, um, tissue. So here's a little magic. No, we won't get that far so fast. Um, but anyways, yeah, it's just tissue paper. And this next little part that I'm going to be doing here is, um, clearing the edges. Um, if, when you're using wood, like I've seen Magrathia do, a lot of times you can just, uh, you know, pull that paper straight off. It, uh, wood's a little heavier medium. Uh, these plastic pieces have a little bit more flexibility going on them. Um, so what I'm doing right here is I'm shaving them with a uh, not sharp knife because you don't want to cut into the plastic. So, but not necessarily a dull knife either. Um, you do want to make sure you're being careful here, kids. Um, you know, sometimes, you know, sometimes this stuff gets a little dangerous, you know, and but, I don't know, walking around every day is a little bit dangerous. So, um, yeah, I'll let you watch me shave a little bit here and, uh, I'll get back to you in a second. Okay. So a couple of things here. Um, 
I do like to prime on the inside, but it was a gorgeous day outside, so I figured I'd, I'd throw a little rattle can out here. Not everybody has an airbrush. Um, so what the plan originally was going to be, uh, you know, priming black. Then if you notice what I'm doing with this uh, brown-orange-ish, um, I'm swirling um, and not covering very well. Uh, the plan here was to give myself, uh, you know, a, a massive dark, uh, mid-tone of a brown, which goes with the green very well. And then, you know, we we're going to highlight it white um, in certain spots. And uh, you're going to see in a second what ends up. Yep, here we go. Brand new can. And... Okay. I gotta say, um, yeah, stop the presses right now. Holy cow, did that white not work in? Wow, I'm livid, you know, trying to make a YouTube video, trying to do all this, and a God bless it, brand new can of white paint poofs on me. Um, yeah. Yeah, toss that thing across the across the neighborhood. Um, then I had to go pick it up because, you know, it was a stupid thing for me to do in the first place. But, I mean, it wasn't like any paint was going to come out anywhere, right? I mean, you know, why would it come out after I tossed the thing? You know, of course it did, you know. Um, yeah. Anyways, um, yeah, uh, something to be said about disappointments during projects. Um, there's every single thing you do can screw up uh, over and over and over again. Uh, some projects, it just never, never <laughs> seems to seems to happen, but you got to keep pushing through. Um, yeah, no white on this. Now, I suppose I could use my airbrush and, and do what I originally wanted to do, but the truth is, after calming down for a half a second, um, uh, we're going to do something a little different now. Um, so, uh, bear with me here. Um, I'm going on the fly from now on. So, yeah, anyways, back to the video. So, anyways, uh, the original idea here was we were going to mix up you know, craft paints really, really thin and do consecutive layers in different areas, utilizing the somewhat synthol uh, highlights I was doing. Uh, the new plan, we're making a little thicker craft paint. Um, yeah, uh, some people like mixing this right into the glue right away. Um, I actually like uh, the glue at the end. Uh, I can give it a little froth um, and work the swirls of it. So what I'm doing right here is we're going to give ourselves a nice sumpy color, a um, little lighter. So I think I add a filter a little later on um, to bring this down. But um, yeah, at this point, I was just kind of working just to get past the old blow up on the, on the <laughs> spray paint can. Um, yeah, and like I said, I'm on the fly here, so I'm just throwing paint down and seeing what's going on. I mean, this isn't something that's going to be detrimental to anything. It's a sump tile, so um, just thinking about what I was going to do, and right about here, I realized, oh, yeah, okay, all right. There's a little technique I did got about two years ago now on some of the first tiles I ever made, which was um, utilizing paint, um, uh, GW paints at the time frame, uh, mixed with some contrast and a whole lot of water. Um, and I upgraded this, pulled out the wet palette, and I gave myself some uh, highest highlights. Um, what we're going to be using here is we're going to be using a combination of, of uh, inks, uh, a little bit of contrast paint, and I'm putting some flow improver and some uh, drying retardant in. And now what's going to happen is we're going to put it on and we're going to spread it with the water. The, uh, the trick is, is we're going to make this 
um, almost muddy. Um, what I'm looking for is I'm looking for the colors to shape out and actually see the pigment um, when it's dry, when the water gives out. Uh, I added the retardant to give myself a longer drying time and a more of a work time so I can uh, adjust. Um, so as far as the yellow you're seeing right there, that's actually Tesseract Glow. It's just really, really thin. Um, and I go back a little later where my, where my uh, you can kind of see the ghosts of the lines. They don't cover very well. The idea here is to, that's where I'm gonna put the Tesseract Glow. Um, this will show up great under black light. Um, and that brown um, really kind of looks nice. Um, yeah. So I, yeah, I'm doing a purple, I'm doing a green. There's a turquoise. Um, and there's a, a real muddy bluish green. Um, yeah, this is all just to give flat surfaces character. Um, it's very close to two-dimensional painting. It's about as close as I can come, actually. Um, didn't think about that until just now. But uh, yeah, anyways. Um, yeah, so we are going to give it a filter. Um, this is a point when you can use mistakes that you've made years past. Um, during the, uh, when I first started back, the pandemic was still kind of going on. So, you know, I went down to the GW store and, hey, we're out of Agrax Earthshade. And I said, well, okay, hey, I found a bottle. Uh, not looking. I don't know if you noticed that label. <laughs> That's gloss. Um, which, I mean, you can use, um, I didn't want to use it straight, so I watered it way, way down again and gave it the uh, uh, retardant medium to it. Um, so I get some chance to move things around. And if anything pools in the wrong spot, you can just add water to it um, and move it out. Now, here's the tiles after the filter's been drying for a few days. Um, I'm putting uh, the first coat of Mod Podge on, and unfortunately, I believe I'm putting it on a little too thick. Um, few, a few of you may notice that um, I'm using a really cheap brush again. Um, I'm looking for the bristle strokes, because while we get it all jammed in here on this first coat, um, you'll notice I end up using the circles. Um, those swirl patterns show up, um, especially as you keep adding layers to it. Um, yeah, the first coat, a little thicker, um, maybe a little too thick. Um, you wanna be a little careful with this. This Mod Podge I have is a dishwasher safe version of it. Uh, extremely high gloss, um, very good wear. Um, I don't think a resin pour would work on these simply because of the flexibility of the plastic. Uh, the resin will be a little uh, brittle. And if these things actually do bend, the resin will break off. So I've decided to go with this. Um, do a little walk through here at the end. Yeah, it kind of does look a little bit like two dimensional art, but once we put some terrain and stuff on here, you know, this is about the only time you'll ever see it like this. Um, all right, well, we got some camera magic going on. Um, thanks so much, you guys. Um, we will see you later. <laughs>